Thank you, Professor Apano Verma, for introducing me, and thank you, Greg, for the kind invitation to join um, this year's International Festival of Public Health. Um, I'm delighted to have the opportunity to present to you today a brief introduction on infodemic management um, on behalf of the WHO Information Network for Epidemics. In this talk, I'll firstly explain what an epidemic is and how it can cause public health problems, and secondly, what we are and can do about it. This works. Oh, yes. Um, and silly me, I forgot to introduce myself. Um, I'm the Technical uh, Officer of Epidemic Management at the World Health Organization um, headquarters here in Geneva, Switzerland. And I work as part of the team helping to grow epidemic management as a discipline, as well as the tools and approaches for better health preparedness and emergency response. Apologies for um, <laughs> the backward introduction. So firstly, what is an epidemic? You might remember over a year ago, the WHO's Director General Tedros raised the alarm about the twin challenges of fighting an epidemic as well as an infodemic. An infodemic goes beyond an overabundance of information. We see a surge in information and rumours, including misinformation. In times of emergencies and uncertainty, when faced with this infodemic, it makes it even harder for people to find reliable information that could help them make informed decisions to enact healthy behaviours to protect their health and their communities. So what is misinformation? Misinformation is inaccurate information, which includes um, kernels of truth and is often shared by people who intend to do no harm or mislead. Disinformation, on the other hand, is false or inaccurate information shared with the intention to mislead or do harm. The main difference between misinformation and disinformation is motivation or intent. Um, an infodemic can cause serious harm as a confusion can lead people to ignore public health measures and take risks. You may recall hearing the tragic reports during the past year of people being poisoned by drinking methanol or improperly using cleaning products. But there are other consequences of an epidemic. It exacerbates mistrust in science, health authorities, and in public health measures. So how do we get into the epidemic? Some people think that the epidemic is only a problem of online misinformation. Experience has shown um, that certain events can affect the way the information environment online and offline, oh sorry, can affect the information environment online and offline, making it hard for those trying to tackle misinformation to do so effectively. Think election times, natural disasters, and of course the COVID-19 pandemic. But what has made the COVID-19 pandemic, um, sorry, epidemic, such an unprecedented challenge is the fact that we're experiencing an epidemic in a digitized global society. So we live in a digital world and the epidemic crosses borders and digital and physical spaces. Really the information ecosystem has changed so there is no distinction between the online and offline world these days. So in short, our communication ecosystem looks very different from what it did before, and advances in digital media are making it easier than before to rapidly share unverified content. And as such, rumours can travel across borders quickly. It's a global phenomenon. And to reduce its harmful effect on our ability to control the pandemic, we need everyone involved. We need all parts of society to get involved, and we need to manage the infodemic across multiple levels um, and communities from the global and local level. So we need to better manage the epidemic to save lives during health emergencies, to build and maintain trust in health authorities and health measures, um, to reduce acceptability to misinformation and to ensure universal access to credible health information so that everyone can make more informed uh, decisions about how to protect themselves and each other. So how do we do this? Well, we need to continue to build the discipline of epidemic management. The WHO has addressed epidemic management through developing a framework with 50 global actions, 
developing a public health research agenda for managing infodemics to accelerate investment in the science and innovation for an evidence-based approach, building new partnerships and a toolbox for countries, rolling out a competency framework for infodemic management and training a whole new generation of infodemic managers um, to effectively use these tools. And just this year, five journals came together with a call for papers to tackle aspects of the research agenda and special issues will be coming out throughout the year. Two of them have already come out with papers. So um, I guess to manage the infodemic, we need um, an evidence-based uh, framework like that of epidemiologists um, for advancing the science. The infodemic management needs to be mainstreamed um, into epidemiological preparedness and response plans because flattening the infodemic curve will help us to flatten the epidemic curve. And as such, we want to integrate infodemic management into our health security and preparedness plans. And we also need to identify the information gaps and data voids and fill them before they're filled with viral misinformation. And we need to ensure um, strong feedback loops uh, so that we can better track uh, changing concerns in community. So let me walk you through some of the things that the WHO has been doing um, in developing out um, the infodemic management um, area. So firstly, um, in early April last year, the WHO Information Network for Epidemics, epi -WIN for short, held a global consultation on managing the infodemic. The aim of the consultation was to crowdsource ideas for managing the infodemic from an interdisciplinary group of experts to feed into a draft infodemic response framework. Through an online interactive forum, close to 600 ideas were submitted with participants over two days. The outcome of the EpiWIN global online consultation, 50 proposed actions for a framework for managing infodemics in health emergencies. So the framework provides guidance for governments and public health institutions to take action in, key, uh, in five key areas that emerge from the consultations. So you can see those on the slide. So number one, identifying evidence. Number two, simplifying knowledge. Number three, amplifying action. Four, quantifying impact. And five, improving coordination and governance. So the WHO intends to continue to refine this framework based on the experience of the COVID-19 infodemic response, lessons of other disease outbreaks to support preparedness and response in the future and inform risk mitigation. <clears throat> Sorry. Um, so I encourage you to download the research agenda here um, and look at how to contribute to it, because there are lots of questions for us to answer, such as how infodemics and online influences are affecting offline behaviour and which, in, um, which interventions uh, will be more effective to manage the infodemic. We all have a stake in infodemic management. It isn't just the responsibility of the WHO or health authorities, but also for academics, uh, researchers, the media and civil society. So the research agenda comprises of five streams of thinking, um, 65 research questions developed and prioritized so that, practice, so that the practice of infodemic management has a structure, evidence-based methodology and room to evolve as a discipline. Accordingly, it serves as a playbook for conducting relevant public health research and builds direct focus and investment into the emerging field. It provides um, guidance to invest in research and innovation so that we have better interventions and tools to understand, measure and respond to epidemics and ultimately steer people towards timely, accessible and understandable health information that can help them make good or better health choices. So one thing is clear, we all have a role to play in operationalizing the research framework. Um, so worth checking out is this exciting um, initiative of the Africa um, Epidemic Alliance, uh, Response Alliance, apologies, um, so IRA for short, 
um, a WHO hosted network that coordinates actions and pools resources to manage the epidemic by addressing information gaps and tackling misinformation around the COVID-19 pandemic and other health emergencies in Africa. We all know that false claims can spread faster than COVID-19 itself because they're simple, visual and tap into our emotions. And that's why Viral Facts Africa launched on March 30. It connects health experts, fact checkers and communicators to inoculate people against harmful misinformation, essentially working together to make good information go viral. So to date, um, in terms of the training, uh, I'm delighted to share that we, um, or the WHO has just recently hosted its second uh, global infodemic management um, manager training. Uh, so it's now hosted two. So the first one in November 2020 and um, just this year in June 2021. We have trained over 500 participants from 119 countries and counting. Um, but the global epidemic management response, um, as you have heard now, requires more trained uh, epidemic managers to support epidemic management efforts across the globe while promoting resilience of individuals and communities to the epidemic, including mis and disinformation. So watch out for a call for applicants uh, for the third ever global epidemic management training planned for later this year. Um, subscribe uh, now to the epidemic management news flash to join our growing global community of practice and get access to alerts about new resources, funding opportunities, new research and lots more. Um, subscribe by the bit.ly link that is shown on the slide. Um, I'll make sure to share the link um, in the chat after I present. And I guess we've reached the final um, official slide of my presentation deck. So um, my final call for action is a request for everyone um, joining us today to have a read and sign our call for action to be an infodemic manager in your daily life. We have more than uh, sorry, 500 signatories um, and counting from diverse organizations. So join the movement as a champion for truth and global health. Thank you.